former director of the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Ajiman Budu, uh, Akosa wants uh, government to set up a supervisory body that will help uh, oversee the activities of medical practitioners to avoid the friction uh, between medical doctors and nurses. His comments uh, come on the back of the suspension of the NSS Ashanti Regional Director, Alex Opoku Mensa, for two months without pay uh, for hurling verbal insults on a nurse who had altercations with his daughter. A doctor, uh, of course, uh, who is now famed for that uh, uh, incident that occurred at the Mensha Government Hospital. We hear from Dr. Jaman Budu uh, Akosa uh, shortly. Uh, but first, uh, let's listen to excerpts of, um, let's bring you just excerpts of that statement released uh, by the committee that was set up uh, so we can get an understanding of what it is that the National uh, Service Secretariat uh, is doing in respect of this matter. And uh, it reads that, uh, kindly refer to our letter with reference and then the le uh, letter goes on to indicate that uh, in respect of the in incident uh, which occurred between your good self and a nurse at the Mensha Government Hospital on Sunday at uh, the 27th of November 2022 uh, which uh, led to the directive of management suspending you for a committee of inquiry investigations into the matter. Now the indication we're getting is that and this is from the letter, I'm just quoting, that I wish to inform you uh, that the committee has completed its assignment and submitted the report to management, a copy of, of which is hereby enclosed for your attention. At, the, at its seating on Wednesday, the 21st of December 2022, the board, after extensively deliberating on the committee's report, unanimously adopted the recommendations proffered by the committee uh, on the basis uh, that we're about to see. Uh, so these are uh, the points to note. That first of all, you're suspended for two calendar months without pay. There's also the case that after the suspension, uh, you are to resort to the head office uh, to work under supervision. And then within seven days upon receipt of this notice, uh, the embattled director is also uh, being issued and uh, he's expected to issue an official apology to the National Service Scheme for bringing the name of the scheme into disrepute. So beyond that as well, this directive, as we know, is taking immediate effect. Uh, so um, this letter will now be going to the Ashanti Regional Director. And once he receives that, in view of this development, uh, he's been invited to the head office for a meeting. Uh, on, on Wednesday, which uh, obviously transpired already. So uh, he is now serving the terms of this directive, uh, which have been made public now by the National Service Secretariat. But earlier, we know that the Ghana uh, registered nurses were making some demands. We can now hear, first of all, from the uh, former director of the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Ajiman Bedou Akosa, who uh, is pushing for government to setting some regulatory uh, body that will check the pract uh, I mean, activities of uh, medical practitioners. I think it is important that all health professionals appreciate the fact that it is a multidisciplinary team, each holding its own and contributing to the ultimate health of the people. It is important that everybody accepts and knows their limitation in terms of their professional work. I think for me, this is the basic paradigm. If you are a professional, you know the limit to your training and expertise, and you know when to pass on and even within a set professional grouping, that is why there are seniors, there are consultants, there are subspecialists, and so on and so forth. I think one of the difficulties is that in this country, there is lack of supervision. There's lack of supervision of all professional groupings. And it has allowed people to attempt to do what they like. And in essence, to go beyond what their capacity and capability permits them. 
And that is why this friction continues. Because I've worked in the UK, I know what happens there. There is no difficulty. Everybody, every professional group knows what they do. And they do it very well. And in the end, the patient gets better. We haven't got into that stage yet. And I want to implore all health professionals that we are in a new year. Let all of us pace back one moment, reflect on our training, on our capacity, on our capability, and know that we work as a team, a harmonious team, for the benefit of the patient, for the benefit of society, and for the benefit of this country, Ghana. Well, so that's the root cause of the problem, I guess. Uh, but what is the suggestion from the Ghana uh, Registered Nurses and Midwives uh, Association? I want to bring in now David Tinkranchum, who's Je a general secretary uh, of that group. Thank you, sir, for spending some time with us. Happy New Year as well. Um, so I guess you're starting off the year uh, reconciling uh, with, 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 with uh, even the embattled Ashanti Regional Director of the NSS, I believe. Uh, are you giving him, a ch uh, giving him a chance now? Right. Uh, happy New Year to you and your viewers. Uh, of course, why not? Um, we believe that uh, we are human beings. We are here at one point in life. And we've seen the recommendations that have been laid out by the committee that was constituted to look into the matter mm -hmm. and the dispute. And I must say that we are very satisfied. We think that um, although we're asking for a total dismissal of sin, but um having heard that he showed or he demonstrated mm. uh, uh, remorse before the committee we should move on uh, after all, we're not just asking him to go home and waste away but if he could be redeployed mm. to where he could exert that kind of energy in a positive way right that would be appropriate okay and, and now in the letter we know that he's to officially apologize to the nurses do you have any information uh, if that has been done? Uh, unfortunately, I did not cite that in the letter. Um, it appears as though uh, he's rather supposed to uh, render unqualified apology to the institution that he's worked with. And we felt that uh, it, was, it would have been appropriate mm -hmm. if same had been extended to the nursing profession. Mm -hmm. uh, but be it as it may, we, we think we are, oh, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, I should go on. Yeah. Then Ghana should have peace of mind. Right. Uh, the, the last time we spoke, you uh, indicated to us that the nurse uh, in question ha had been transferred or relocated for uh, safety purposes. Uh, what's going to be the future of that nurse in question? Um, are you working out some transfer plans for her or what's going to happen? Sure, that will definitely depends on the recommendations mm -hmm. of the clinical psychologist. If right. he goes ahead to um, recommend that um, based on his own assessment, the lady will not be in a better position to work in my shell hospital. We will certainly follow through due process mm. and get him uh, off the place. Uh, but for now, we are yet to receive the recommendations. Mm. Uh, and it's good that we're yeah, and it's good that we're having this conversation because you just listened to uh, Professor Ajiman Bedu and of course make that point that uh, this is the time that we need regulation. Of course, a body that will. Uh, try and check the friction between doctors and nurses. Is that the case? Do you usually find that happening in our public hospitals? Well, I, I don't know whether we actually need a regulatory body because mm. all these professional groupings have their own regulatory body and their code of conduct and that's expected of practitioners. Mm. Um, maybe what we should look at is how to be able to train as part of the orientation of newly qualified doctors or nurses, we should be able to uh, train them for them to understand the nuances of working within a multidisciplinary uh, health team mm. as we have it. Of course, from time to time, you can have these frictions, going, you know, but we are able to resolve it in our own way. I mean, it, it shouldn't escalate. And mind you, as far as I'm concerned, doctors and nurses don't have any uh, problem. We, we are working. Assiduously well because the center at the center of all these 
confusion and whatever is a patient who is our prime mm. uh, concern. So we should be able to bury our hatches. Yeah, but it appears that what's missing through. is that is that synergy between and not just and let's not be fixated on on doctors and nurses, but other health. Uh, groupings uh, as well. D don't you feel that there's a coordinating mechanism that that's missing, which is not present? I agree perfectly with that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, as I professor said, right. we need to be able to work together. Oh, I never knew my brother was at the, uh, was on the call. <laughs> uh, Happy New Year, uh, right. Doctor uh, Titus, uh, right. and congratulations on, on your PhD. Mm. So, um, <laughs> yes, thank we you, need and, and same to you, David. <laughs> Thank you, my brother. Right. We need to work in such a harmonious uh, way so that we can, you know, change the narrative and improve, uh, if you like, health outcomes. And I'm for that. I'm for any form of reform mm -hmm. that will bring that kind of uh, domestic way of working mm -hmm. or any type of relationship that will foster unity and, and in among uh, health prof professionals mm. and since you you've announced this presence i, I just want to welcome dr titus uh, bayup who's uh, the general secretary for the ghana medical association uh, happy new year congratulations as well uh, so <laughs> let's get off with, with a conversation uh, just before we talk about the tra travel advisory on uh, coronavirus and what's happening in china i just want you to also touch on this uh, recommendation coming through from uh, Professor Bedu, uh, I mean, on, on the issue about getting a regulatory body that will uh, check the friction between nurses and doctors and other uh, health uh, professionals as well. Uh, it's coming at a time, of course, when the National Service Secretariat is also making some recommendations on what happened. Uh, have you also, as the Ghana Medical Association, carried out your independent assessment? Uh, and, and what do you have to say about the recommendations that have been made now? All right, good afternoon and uh, good afternoon to your viewers mm. and uh, good afternoon to my colleague, uh, David. Mm. Um, and let me use the opportunity to just quickly congratulate all doctors in Ghana for the 65th anniversary of the establishment of the Ghana Medical Association. Mm. Uh, I think it was at that event that Professor Bedou Akosa made this uh, recommendation. Mm. And indeed, the GMA is really happy to work with all other healthcare workers, mm -hmm. and we have been at the forefront of trying to build a healthcare team. As uh, was mentioned, uh, it's been shown in some parts of the world that to provide health for one patient, you need about 65 different healthcare professionals uh, to be able to come together and provide just one patient with a complete rounded care. So one person cannot do it. Right. And we support every call of us uniting and coming together and so anything that um, seems to bring that. But I should just add that I think we work together a lot. Mm. And the narrative that seems to suggest that there's a lot of friction between us is not exactly true. Mm. Uh, no doctor can work without a nurse, without a pharmacy, without a lab person. And, and the reverse is true for all the other healthcare workers. So that teamwork is critical. And we will support anything that feathers that and then enhances it better. Mm. Uh, how do you make the public understand this? Because, uh, for instance, in the case of the... Uh, NSS director, I guess if you w were to be aware of the, uh, the pr procedure, uh, the practices uh, in, in, in the, I mean, in terms of how you go about your duties, uh, that may, incident may, may never have happened. So how are you working closely with uh, GR and NMA and other groupings just to intensify education on this matter? Well, so education first has to be internal to our own members. So mm. we appreciate that we work in an environment uh, a work environment that we have to tolerate each other yeah. and that you need that complete team to be able to provide care. And I think we are working at that. At the national level, yeah. the leadership collaborates a lot. You have seen us issue joint statements as healthcare unions on several matters. Yeah. And there are a lot of programs we do that it's all of us together as a team. Yeah. Um, now, to the general public, I mean, as it is, it's unfortunate, but usually the media and other people have been interested in this one or two sensational case. That mm -hmm. incident was a very unfortunate thing, mm -hmm. and it does not speak to the generality of the relationship. Mm -hmm. And in the midst of that incident that happened, the communication that was going forth between us at the national leadership level was significant. So you'll notice, for instance, that the GMA publicly never spoke on, on that issue. Mm -hmm. 
uh, because we were trying to do the background dialogue just to make sure that things are settled in an amicable way so that it's not as though nurses are against doctors. Um, and, and that was the posture of the GMA in that particular event. I think that we have to continue to collaborate and continue to let the public appreciate that when you get to the healthcare set, um, setting, it's a teamwork. Very often than not, when things don't go well, people might blame a nurse, but the actual problem may not even come from a nurse. may come from another cadre of healthcare person, but because they interface more with the nurse, the nurse may be the person to be blamed. The doctor holds ultimate responsibility for a patient. If things go wrong, and they are suing the hospital, they'll probably sue the doctor. But when you go into detail, you may realize that there are other team members who might have played roles that may even lead to that. So it just tells us how intricate this relationship is. And we really are mindful of that. And we are as strong as the weakest member of this healthcare team. It's the reason why we must build each other's capacity to make sure that quality of care is improved. Interesting points there. And David, I'm just interested in uh, the directive to your members going forward, knowing that NSS has brought this matter to a conclusive end and that you have to go going forward, uh, try as much as possible to get your members to adjust and, and to meet some standard practices and procedures. Uh, what, what directive are you giving to members across the country? Kindly unmute for me, uh, David, so I can, I can hear your point. Right, sorry. Right. So yes, I mean, only to tell our people that look, we work uh, together and in such a multidisciplinary team of uh, health professionals, you are likely to encounter one difficulty or the other, and they should be able to uh, respect each other and um, do what is necessary. I hope you understand because uh, somebody will by all means step on the other person's too, especially in, in a complex team like that, right? And we should be able to tolerate each other and um, extend such respect to each other professional, not necessarily doctors and the rest of the healthcare team, so that we can work together. As I said, the set, at the center of all these uh, interactions is the patient who uh, needs to, you know, get well in, in terms of whatever uh, chief complaint that the person presented. So we are very mindful of this and our people are going to work assiduously uh, with everybody so that we have some peace of mind uh, to, to go about our normal duties. Uh, gentlemen.